And with the advent of cars that drive themselves, lots of eerie, interesting and eerie questions are being raised about who holds the bag when something goes wrong. Well, that's a question we're going to talk about this morning as we welcome Robert Ryan. Good morning, Robert Ryan. Good morning, Peter. How are you today? I'm fine. What's this about a Tesla owner involved in an auto crash? Well, more bad news for Tesla in August of this year when a 44-year-old Model S operator uh, driving his car with the autopilot feature engaged hit a guardrail on a rural road in Texas. Um, He's going around a curve, a curve that he says he had traveled many times before, and because he had the autopilot engaged, he had taken a cloth out of his glove compartment and was cleaning his dashboard when the vehicle, instead of following the curve on the road, smashed into the guardrail, and after the initial crash, uh, continued to accelerate into the guardrail multiple times until the vehicle was ultimately destroyed. Okay. Who's at fault? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, The driver came away with just a bloody nose, and he's not interested in pursuing anything uh, legal as far as a claim goes. However, his insurance company, Chubb, is taking a hard look at this. They compensated the driver for the destruction of his vehicle. And uh, in the law, there's something called subrogation. If your uh, insurance company pays you off for a a loss because you've you've been in an accident, they can go looking for somebody they say is responsible to recover that payment. And that's what Chubb is doing here. They've hired a law firm to look into whether or not Tesla and its autopilot feature is responsible for this loss so they can recover some or all of the not insignificant payment they made to compensate the owner of the vehicle for its destruction. Now, Tesla does cost a large amount of money, doesn't it, when you're replacing one? Well, it costs a lot of money. And, you know, this is an interesting issue that's come up in some other situations involving Tesla in the last several months. Um, There was an incident in uh, July of this year in Montana where a vehicle went off the road and hit a number of fence posts. Although in that case, Tesla is arguing that the autopilot feature was not engaged. There was an incident in Pennsylvania where a vehicle left the road while it was on autopilot and hit a tree. Uh, The driver was cited for reckless driving. And in that case, his defense is that it's the Tesla autopilot feature that caused the collision. And maybe your listeners, Peter, are familiar with that tragic situation in Florida where an Ohio man driving a Model S with the um, autopilot feature engaged hit the side of a tractor trailer, sheared off the top of his vehicle, and was killed. And the allegation there is that Tesla's autopilot feature could not distinguish between the side of the tractor trailer and a cloudy sky. Um, and that, in, that crash is being investigated by uh, federal regulators at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to see whether this autopilot feature is maybe causing more problems than it's worth. Now, is Tesla the only car that uses autopilot? Well, that's a very interesting question, Peter. Um, the technical term for this, for, this, uh, for this feature is traffic-aware cruise control. And what that means is that we're all familiar with the cruise control in most vehicles that controls braking and acceleration, typically when we're on a long drive. And then we also have this feature like backup warning so that when we're parking the car, we don't hit the car that's parked behind us. Oh, and we're pulling forward into our garages, we don't hit the wall. So Tesla has a combination of that, that they've put the name autopilot on. And that name is causing a lot of problems. Um, Ford and Google, as many of your listeners may know, are investigating something called autonomous cars, cars that are not, entitled, are not intended to have any driver whatsoever, fully automated, right? Tesla, however, has this kind of hybrid situation that does involve a lot of interaction with the driver, but they're calling it autopilot. And many critics are saying that the name itself has created a misleading impression that the driver can simply engage autopilot and then take his attention completely away from the operation of the vehicle. And Tesla, in the fine print, says, no, not, that's not the case. The driver still does need to be engaged to make sure that if the autopilot function fails, he can take over and safely operate the vehicle. Well, you talk about in the fine print, and the fine print is awfully itty-bitty, isn't it? 
Well, this is the this is the issue with Tesla, right? Um, they have this kind of image, and Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla, has promoted this image of being this technologically advanced company. Uh, he has a SpaceX company that sends rockets, uh, satellites into the air on rockets at half the cost of his competitors, based on some new technology. He has this Tesla autopilot feature, which some people say are creating this. A mistaken impression in people's mind. But part of his business model is this technologically cutting edge development. And critics are saying that in this particular case, as with maybe his SpaceX problems uh, that he's had recently, his, his, the hype has gotten a little bit ahead of what the techno- technology can actually deliver. So if I understand it right, Tesla's autopilot is somewhere between cars that we drive and cars that are going to be self-driving at some point. That, that's exactly right, and that's what people say the problem is. You know, we've all sat on a plane, and maybe we've seen the pilot come out of the cockpit and get something from uh, the, the stewardess to eat or to use the restroom, and we're like, hey, why isn't the pilot flying the plane? And then we think, oh, it's on autopilot. So we all have this impression that when we say the words autopilot, it's automatic. And Consumer Products, the Consumer Product Safety Commission and also Consumer Reports, that consumer uh, research agency, has called upon Tesla to think about changing the name so that this mistaken impression is not created and people aren't confused with fully autonomous vehicles, which are being developed by some other manufacturers. Well, I also have to wonder, Robert, if Mr. Texas, the guy who owned the car, uh, didn't want to sue because he knew he was a dodo. Well, <laughs> you know, in this particular case, uh, he, he fully admits that he was not uh, engaged in operating the vehicle. He said he had reached into his glove compartment and was wiping down the dashboard. But he felt that, you know, that was okay because he had driven the vehicle along this road on many prior occasions. And that's another aspect of this Tesla feature. You know, it's kind of like this real-time satellite-loaded updates that the vehicle is constantly getting from other Tesla drivers and also incorporating the car's own experience into its database. And so he felt that because he had done this on previous occasions, there would have been no reason not to assume that the car was able to handle itself on this occasion. Of course, Tesla says that that's not what autopilot is intended to do. But the issue is, is that at odds with what Tesla's own advertising tells consumers? So where does it look like this issue is going? Well, I think it looks like it's going that Tesla's going to have to make some changes. And ironically, Tesla was getting ready to make a major announcement concerning changes to this autopilot feature at the end of August. Unfortunately, the next day, one of its SpaceX rockets blew up when launching a satellite, and that delayed the announcement. Um, The rumor has it, though, that they will be announcing that change shortly, and what they're going to do is they're going to require more driver interaction so that the driver's hands have to be on the wheel when the autopilot feature is engaged to make sure that the driver knows that this is not the fully autonomous feature that Ford and Google and some of these other manufacturers have been talking about. Do you anticipate, though, that Tesla's going to have to pay up to the insurance company? Well, it's the kind of thing where, you know, Tesla's business model and the rest of Elon Musk's uh, business endeavors, they get a lot of media attention. They've got a lot of investor interest. And there's a whole cachet and there's a whole kind of, you know, mentality associated with all of that. That means a lot of money and a lot of exposure to Elon Musk, Tesla, and all of his various endeavors. So given these the the series of crashes that has happened over the summer, it seems to me that Tesla doesn't want to have a long, drawn-out battle with some insurance company over this particular incident. And maybe we'll see a quiet settlement where a new vehicle is provided and we can get this out of the headlines from Tesla's perspective. Why did you decide to take on this issue? Well, you know, here at Cousa Claw in Southern California, we're involved in automobile accidents. Uh, that's probably one of our major uh, practice areas. And the whole issue of autonomous vehicles and self-driving cars is very interesting to anybody in the automotive public or in the legal system who works in that particular area. I mean, if you think about it, fully 90% of the car crashes in this country are generally attributed to driver error. And they've killed almost 35, 36,000 people every year on our nation's roads. So on the one hand, this technology prevents a tremendous opportunity to make vehicle driving safer. 
On the other hand, when you have this kind of situation where maybe marketing gets ahead of the technology, you have the, you have the opportunity for problems like happened in Texas and it happened in Florida when that man lost his life. And you raised an important point, Robert, in that the majority of automobile accidents are caused by dummies driving. Well, that's right, you know. And so if you look at Ford and Google, and actually there's a city in China that has an entire fleet of completely autonomous vehicles where there's no driver whatsoever. So the thought is, is that if we can use, use technology to take the driver and driver error out of the equation, motoring will be safer. Unfortunately, Tesla isn't quite there yet and may have created confusion in people's minds that, in fact, they are when they're not. All right, I just made you king of the world. What would you do about this issue? Well, I think what we need to do, first of all, is we have to make sure that people aren't confused by the Tesla autopilot feature. And I would say that a good first step would be change the name because it's creating an impression in people's mind that the technology does not yet match. And then what would you do? Anything? Well, I think that the wave of the future is the autonomous vehicles. I mean, I think we need to have a situation where the Ford and the Google model, where we take the driver out of the equation entirely and we adopt our road system so that the vehicles do not require drivers and all of the mistakes they will constantly make will have a safer motoring public. And what would you say is the biggest mistake drivers make? Well, <laughs> we know that distracted driving is a major, major problem in this country. You know, with the advent of cell phones and texting and emails and all of these other kinds of things, car makers are striving to adopt their own technology to try to minimize the distraction that that's going to pose. We have hands-free cell phone conversation. We have text-to-talk so that people can text while they're speaking rather than look and fiddle at their phones. However, the vast majority of vehicles do not have those features, but the vast majority of the motoring public are using their handheld devices while they're behind the wheel, and that's an enormous problem in this country, and it's only going to get worse until we have the technology that catches up with human behavior in that regard. If we want more information about this issue, what do you want us to do? Well, I would like you to, any, any of your listeners to, to visit our website at Kuzik Law. That's K-U-Z-Y-K-L-A-W dot com. You can follow us on Facebook, and you can listen to this, this program uh, on a podcast. And there's other information there that's uh, available to anybody concerning this and other issues involving the motoring public. And I'd like to, thank you to my, say thank you to my guest, Robert Ryan, for Thank you very us, much, Peter. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure about this emerging legal and social issue. Cars with autopilot, cars that are self-driving, and who ends up holding the bag if something goes wrong. And you've been listening to another edition of WIP Sunday here on 94 WIP Sports Radio. My name's Peter Solomon.